fortunate sort of thing to not only go first, but right after lunch. So if I can, can I get four volunteers? Just very quickly, four volunteers, just stand up, come to the front. Great, thank you very much. Three or four, great, thanks guys. So, so I'm David Alt, the David Alt Group, and if you guys can come up here, if you guys can just go ahead and pass these out. Let's <laughs> <laughs> make sure everyone gets enough. Right. So a little bit of sweet yeah, never hurts, right? right? So interactive grassroots, what does that mean? Well, it's a never. I've changed the slogan so many times I don't, I can't sort of stop. It started with sort of modern grassroots communication, modern media strategies, lots of things. And that was because I hated this term new media because none of it's really new to anyone. And if you're not sort of understanding that this is a, the world that we live in today and in the here and now, and you don't have a nimble and flexible approach to everything that you're doing in communication, you're well behind the curve. So interactive grassroots, what does that mean? Well. I wanted to show you what that meant. And that's why I brought in some sweets um, and asked for four volunteers, because it, those volunteers could have been anyone in this room, but it were these four people who stood up, raised their hands, and said, sure, I'll take a chance and I'll do it. And they came up here and I sort of gave them simple directions, and now they're out there delivering content that I gave them to their networks, to the people like you, people that they know. And I don't really know many of you in the room, but it, that demonstrates what I try to do every single day with groups like the Heritage Foundation, the Manhattan Institute, Newt Gingrich, uh, and different groups like that. Club for Good. So a few of the other things that I do, we have a lot of products and, and I'm always trying to do new and innovative things. Activist is a, a platform I'm gonna talk about. Tweetwatch, which is a way to really sort of segment data uh, coming out of the noise of Twitter. Yeah, just keep them going if people want. Um, but it's the idea that if anyone ever mentions the word pro-life or fiscal responsibility, I want to have those people in my database forever. And what those people say at any point in time is interesting to me. So what I've created is a universe and sort of a real-time focus group where I can just plug into that group and see what their top twit picks are, what their top um, links are that they're sharing, what's the most important news. I don't care about the, the 55 million people that, that are on Twitter. I care about a select few influential people, which is why I created the Capitol Hill Tweet Watch Report, um, which is edited by a guy named Danny Glover, who's recently started for, for me, who uh, many of you probably know. He covered um, the uh, Hillary Clinton uh, care sort of situation in the 90s for Congressional Quarterly and then worked at National Journal. He's worked at Media Research Center and elsewhere. But what he does is he pays attention to the over 200 members of Congress uh, who are on Twitter. He pays attention to important people like Ed Fulner when they tweet something out. And, um, and when they do, he puts it into a free daily email and just emails it out to people. And so it's an interesting way of looking at it, something like Twitter where there's so much noise and people often get overwhelmed. But if we're not publishing this news and this information and this content, then no one is. And no one's paying attention to it. But it's media that's only being shared in this space, twit picks, other interesting things that, that wouldn't exist elsewhere. So I'm gonna be sort of give, you know, just be fair with you and upfront. Um, so I've included what I like to call a little progress bar. So if you follow sort of this little red arrow by the time it gets there is when I'm done. <laughs> so let's talk about Facebook and why it matters. 40% of traffic to the Huffington Post is driven by Facebook. People sharing other folks' content that they find interesting with their network. They're doing it through their newsfeed. Facebook is having tremendous growth, well over 400 million users throughout the world, well over 100 million just in the US alone. You can see sort of the, the growth here, it's just tremendous. Facebook and Google are continuing to have a fight over who has bigger reach and who has more of an impact. Um, but I would argue Facebook, because people, users who are considered folks who log in at least once every 30 days, so they're active users of those 400 million, over 50% log in every single day. That's very important. This is a new watering hole. That's all it is, it's a new community. It is the one place that probably everyone in this room goes every single day to find out interesting news. And it's not only news that's selected by some New York Times editor, but it's news selected by their friends and it's things like pictures of their friends and Rob's baby uh, pictures that I find interesting because we're friends. 
Um, and it's all of this stuff. Average visits per user a month, 24 times. How many times do you think anyone visits your website? Not much. And, and they, don't, they shouldn't have to. We should be delivering content where people want their content delivered to them. We've always had a subscription model. Uh, in the newspaper industry, if I want to subscribe to a magazine, I know it's going to arrive every single week, right? So something like Facebook, it's a new way to create digital paper boys, where people are delivering content just like they're delivering digital or uh, smarties to the room. They're going to deliver that content in the houses that we can't reach because maybe they haven't heard of us. Earlier, I mean, that was a fascinating story by Billy. When she was talking about the Tea Party movement, number one, she said, we had never heard about heritage because we didn't need you, okay? But then when, when they did need you, we were there and we found out about you through the internet. And that's sort of the power of all of this stuff that's happening. So I'm from Ohio, from Columbus, Ohio, and uh, Woody Hayes is just a fact of life. And uh, his goal to winning is not to throw long bombs, it's not sort of the Florida State strategy of doing elaborate things. It's simply three yards in a cloud of dust. And it's the idea that we're going to move the ball forward in small little increments all the time, and that's going to be our strategy, and we're going to stick to it, and ultimately we're going to win more games to get there. Now, the only reason why this works is because of this, because it's a finite end zone, because it's a goal that we can all agree on that we want to get to together. So we understand that his meaningful task given is something that if we stick to, we will reach the goal together. And more often than not, he did. So when you're starting campaigns or thinking about issue campaigns or, or an election, the reason why these things are interesting and why you can get people fascinated through money bonds or, or anything like that is because you're giving people a goal. And people are interested in helping reach a goal because they understand that they can make an impact toward you reaching that goal. And that's of interest to them. So one of the organizations that we've had the very great honor of working with and, and has allowed us to explore a lot of these concepts for the conservative movement is the Heritage Foundation. And uh, recently this year they were awarded a Polly Award for the best fan page. Um, so tremendous uh, work by them. They were you know, one of the, the only conservative organization that won this award. Um, and they've also had what they've done on Facebook case study by Facebook itself. Think about that, how big that company is, and Heritage is the one organization that's getting case studied for what it's done. How did we do it? Well, fortunately, we've worked with them, and we focus solely on the people. So earlier today, we had a, a luncheon keynote address by Billy um, Tucker. So, yeah. Billy Tucker. And she just told her story. And that was so interesting to all of us because we all took something different from it. So for me, I turned to Rob and I was like, she, she found out everything about the heritage online. You know, like that should be underscored in everything that ever happens. Here's a leader of a movement who is spreading the movement uh, via the internet. Um, so telling stories are really interesting to me versus just getting policy news. But what's interesting is how the great resources of the Heritage Foundation, the pocket constitutions, et cetera, are being utilized every single day to help people make a difference. So one of the stories that we um, showed, and this is an advertisement sort of on the left-hand side, is a story about Daryl. And he's a Heritage fan. He's a fan of them, of the Heritage Foundation. And he talked about welfare reform. And, and why welfare reform was so important to him. And because we had the flexibility with the Heritage Foundation to explore, we targeted fans of black entertainment television. And we had tremendous reach into that community because we were, we were able to utilize a, a resource that maybe would have not been utilized to help reach into a new community to talk about an issue like welfare reform that hits home for people. So what are the results? That's all I care about, right? The end zone. How's all of this working? Well, what we're seeing here is sort of the, the early phases of trying to show, reinforcing that this is working, that this is important. Um, we started sort of at zero, and, and we slowly built up. You're going to see the little spikes going up are where we started advertising, sort of the first step up of the big step. And then that huge spike is when, actually, Ed Fulner gave a challenge to fans. When we, we were at around 90,000, he did a video challenge. And he challenged fans to help, help Heritage reach 100,000 fans. It happened, we gained 10,000 fans in like one day because he did that. And that's the power of blending online and offline and giving people these goals to help reach. 
and now as you can see it's actually growing in sort of an organic way because it's hit a critical mass and how does that work how do we how do we understand what this critical mass means and how big this stuff is actually this week actually uh, has done a study where they've identified the true value of a fan and what a fan means to you uh, and in media terms, they found that a fan is worth $3.60 of media. So what they're doing is because fans are engaging with your content, they're passively sharing that content with their network. When people do things like like or comment on your content, it then spreads into their newsfeed and thinks that content is interesting and worth sharing with your newsfeed. You don't even recognize that it's happening. It's not work, right? But it's happening and it's driving traffic. So for the Heritage Foundation, that's what their fan page is worth. And it will never go away as long as they continue to engage with that content in a real and meaningful way. If they stop, if they only focus on the policy side of things and sort of lose what got them there, they, they'll stop growing because you hit sort of a glass ceiling and people need different barrier entry points to get engaged. So how many people recognize what this is? Show of hands, it's okay. What is it? It's a Wheel of Fortune slot machine in Las Vegas or wherever it is. Yeah, exactly. It's a Wheel of Fortune slot machine in Las Vegas. Raise your hand if you've ever seen one of these. Okay, raise your hand if you've ever played one. Not many people, surprisingly. This is the most popular game, period, in the world. Over anything, this is the most popular form of gambling. And why is that? Because they've refined it so much, they know everything about their users, and they know that it is the lowest barrier point of entry for people to get engaged. So they know that an average person will spend $20 in the Wheel of Fortune slot machine. What that will get you is 28 minutes of gameplay. So what does that mean? Obviously, if you just play $20 in one hand, well, people don't do that. They play one credit and they pull it. They play three credits and play it. But it gives us these fascinating noises and it's hitting our auditory senses. And all of a sudden you're sitting on this chair and you're swiveling and you're, you're playing and it's so fun. And, and then you start winning. It's giving you little reinforcements. Three credits here, five credits there. And it's over and over again and then you're playing and losing, playing and losing. But then you're constantly reinforced. So in our heads, we're getting sort of the serotonin sort of overload. That's just, oh my gosh, it's so great. Well, at the end of the 28 minutes, what's happened? You've lost your $20. <laughs> but what does everyone say? <laughs> exactly, right? And people say, I didn't play to win. I played to play. <laughs> That's what it's all about, right? So what they've done is they've focused on the user experience and how they can reinforce people to let them know that this is this is how we can win. So what's interesting to me, and I, I was at, actually asked to speak about kind of what's next and, and where we're headed um, as a company in our, our line of thinking. And so raise your hand if you've ever seen Farmville or Mafia Wars, kind of know what I'm talking about here. Look at the hands, lots of folks. Not saying if you played it. Okay, so let's see them again. If you've never played it, but you just know about it, know something about it, yep, every hand. <laughs> the company that created this is valued at five billion dollars. Five billion dollars. It is the most popular game that has ever been produced, and it's all social gaming. Other popular games, Scrabble on Facebook. Who here plays Scrabble on Facebook? Sudoku, you know these types of things. This idea of social gaming is so interesting to me because it's never been used for politics. How can we use what they're doing in Farmville to make our policy interesting and help spread our message? How can we start registering voters and making it fun to do that through social media and use what we're learning from these different communities to do that? <clears throat> well, our answer, or at least our exploration, uh, Petri Dish, is a product called Activist. And it has, a, I'm glad Rob mentioned the first two awards, um, but we've won three others recently. <laughs> So we've actually won five awards this year for our activist platform. It's built on Facebook Connect. What we did is we started with a lot of research where we interviewed 2,200 people sort of in an online survey, college students, college Republicans actually. We asked them, you know, do you want a Facebook for you? Do you want a Ning site? 
how to use the internet. Everyone said, don't create a new Facebook. We love Facebook how it is, that's where our friends are. So we said, okay, we won't. We use Facebook Connect, which simply lets us plug in to the power of Facebook. So all of those users, we have access to now. All of your friends, we can get access to. We can't keep any of your data unless we collect it ourselves. But we can get that. So the first deployment of Activist was a project for the Heritage Foundation called NoEnergyTax.com. And we had this idea of cap and trade was sort of an interesting subject that was starting to turn around. And could we encourage people and teach people how to become an activist by creating a game? By tapping into the competitive nature of things, by giving people 20 points for watching a YouTube video, by giving people 50 points for updating their Facebook status with the message that we wanted them to spread. And it was wildly successful. It wasn't wildly successful in the sense that it had a massive amount of people who were playing it, because we're not there yet. But it was massively interesting to so many people because for the first time we're starting to use gaming uh, to get policy messages out messages out and tap into the true power of social media. So we recently launched um, one of these websites for the UK Conservatives, um, and it was sort of our first negative version where we wanted to help bring some contrast um, with all of the labor money that's going into the Labor Party in the UK. So we were asking people to participate and help spread the message, contact this reporter, let him know the truth, push back on this news story, leave a comment here. Check out this Wikipedia entry. Edit it if you feel like you should. Um, and the leaderboard, it's driving up points all the time. Uh, the first campaign version, this is actually taking a picture off of my iPod, or uh, my uh, iPhone, just to kind of give you a sense of what this stuff is starting to look like in the mobile space. But this is how it all starts, which is really old. But it's the idea that I sit around and I'm just thinking about new ways that we can do this stuff on every single day. And this is just a notepad, like a rule-lined notepad, and my handwriting is awful. But it's how we think about these things all the time, and it's how hopefully lots of folks are starting to think about it. It's how architects start. It's how artists create art. People think about ideas and just work on it. This is sort of the next phase where we try to make it come to life, and where we just kind of create a very rough version of what it could be. But what we wanted to do from the last version to this version was to focus on you as a person. We wanted this to be about your points, your impact. We wanted this to be about your <coughs> leaderboard and your friends, how you're co comparing with the, the friends that you have on Facebook. And if your friends aren't on, ask them to be. So we launched this yesterday uh, for a New York candidate, Republican, and uh, made some changes, starting to make it easier. But this is what the vision looks like when it comes to life. And these ideas that we're learning more because we're paying attention to our users. So as you can see, I'm, I'm wrapping up. And with that, if you're interested in these ideas and exploring them further, join our conversation. Uh, I'm very easy to find. I hacked my uh, I hacked my name card over here. If you're on Twitter, so that you can see at David All. Um, and these are some of the properties where you can find me. So with that, I'll uh, I'll finish up. Thank you very much.